So with that being said, let's get into the headlines. Or as uh, Philip DeFranco would say, let's just jump right into it. So from NPR.org, vehicle attacks rise as extremists target protesters. Right-wing extremists are turning cars into weapons with reports of at least 50 vehicle ramming incidents since protests against police violence erupted nationwide in late May. At least 18 are characterized as deliberate attacks. Another two dozen are unclear as to motivation or are still under investigation, according to account released Friday by Ari Weil, a terrorism researcher at the University of Chicago's Project on Security and Threats, while has tracked vehicle ramming attacks or VRAs since protests began. I'm thinking VRA, like, yeah, anytime someone dies, we had we to have a good acronym for it. It sounds very, like, you know, in the military, it's VBA or VBIEDs, vehicle borne improvised explosive devices, because, you know, just IEDs wasn't enough. The message they're trying to send is you need to get out of the street and stop these protests. They're trying to intimidate the most recent wave of BLM protesters to stop their movement, Weil said. The last rash of vehicle rammings occurred in 2015 and 16 when the run them over meme was popularized in far right circles in response to Black Lives Matter protests and demonstrations against the controversial Dakota Access Pipeline. The most high profile attack occurred a year later during the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, a white supremacist plowed his car into a crowd, killing 32-year-old Heather Heyer and wounding dozens of others in a bloody weekend that jolted the country into recognizing the resurgent threat of far-right violence. Now, I, I don't know where this is going. I, I did, you know, I, I put the links together and was like, ah, I, I, I don't know if I really want to start the day off with such a negative story. Um, and, and don't worry, we have plenty of good news and emotional freedom coming up later on in the show today. But I, I felt like I had to cover this. This is an important trend to see that this is happening. And a part of me goes, well, tactic, countervailing tactic, intimidation. Is there a, a bigger trend here, right, of uh, you know, attacking protesters that could shut them down you know if there if this really was a concerted effort if it was like every single time you go to a rally someone's gonna you know for black lives matter or or anything related like that someone's gonna run a vehicle into your protest and someone's gonna die like if it was that you'd be like holy crap yeah people people are gonna start shutting down these protests i, I wouldn't go like i mean i, I don't want i don't want to say that I'm not easily intimidated, but even then, like I, I would certainly be discouraged. I can't, I can't say that it wouldn't have to be something really important. I, you know, lives would have to be already at risk for me to risk my life to go and pro. Oh, nah, <laughs> lives already are at risk. What do you know? Now, with these attacks, you know, they're, they're, I, when I see this, I have this fear as someone who identifies more with protesters than vehicle-born attackers you know what would obviously like this is something i don't want to see get any worse i don't want to see develop i don't want to see this this is not an appropriate countermeasure if you, if you disagree with someone to say well when you speak out we're going to kill some of you to, to make it intimidating now if they were able to do this more effectively i might say yeah, we, we really need to address this issue as this issue uh, very, very directly with policy. I don't think that's the case. N do you, what, who are these people? Or as, as Seinfeld would say, who are these people? I should have a better Seinfeld impersonation. Being a Jewish wannabe comic myself. So... <laughs> But no, who are these people? Who, who are, you know, the, the Unite the Right? Who are these, you know, and, and uh, these are, I, I would say, it's, it's not unfair to call them radical right-wing extremists. And I'm, I'm very hesitant with labels and categorizations 
But when we talk about the, the, the people who are actively violently opposing BLM, yeah, uh, those those are violent. Um, you know, I guess. Well, you know, a lot of them. You know, I I I, I got to rephrase some of that because again, the whole left right spectrum is intended to to confuse and disorient and make it harder for people to find you know real principles and politics. Now, if if the right is defined as conservative and, and the left is defined as as liberal and, and conservative by definition means preserving existing social institutions liberal means changing them progressing making them you know in that sense libertarianism is really the only progressive theory out there today the only progressive political party is, is the libertarians democrats are regressive if anything they're, they're, they they want to go to a more state-dominated life, a more government-dominated world. And, you know, the Republicans are, are, are just as bad in, in the sense that they just want to grow the bracket that's more of the same. Whereas the, the types of people that we're talking about here, a lot of them are actual Nazis. Nazis! And they come out and they say, say we're, yeah, we want an ethno-state. And we're going to march with tiki torches like my, I, I mean, I hesitate to call him a friend still, but uh, former friend. I mean, he hasn't done anything really against me he's, he's so much as against uh, my race, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, Jews will not replace us, but Chris Cantwell, uh, you know, wants that ethno state. And it's driven very much by fear and hatred. Now, we have to define Nazi, unfortunately, because most Americans don't know the definition of the word Nazi. They just hear not, oh, Nazi, the guys who worked for Hitler and wanted to take over the world for the German master race. That, that's how people like to find the term Nazi. And it's, it's really sad that we, we use this term improperly because by that definition, none of these jerks are, are Nazis. They don't work for Hitler. They don't worship Hitler. They don't celebrate Hitler. You know, they're not, you know, a lot of them smoke pot on 420 like the rest of us. They don't go, ah, it's Hitler's birthday. Let's have a party. No, they, but they are Nazis. They are nationalists. They are socialists. Now, who else is nationalist? And so, like, what? Because remember, Nazi, na, the NA is for nationalism. The Z, Z I, that was, was for, from the German word for socialism. Like, that's where this word comes from. You look at it that direction. Who's a what's a national socialist? Someone who believes in in nationalism that that you should have a strong national identity or an identity as a country, right? And that that country should be socialist. That some things should be controlled by government and socialized, like we have socialized medicine today with Medicare and Medicaid, like we have socialized defense with the U.S. Uh, military, like we have socialized immigration control with the government border enforcement. We have uh, socialized infrastructure with roads. We have socialized public safety with the police. We have socialized retirement with uh, social security. Now, a lot of conservatives, well, those things aren't socialism, Adam. Well, they're, they're, what are you going to make the case for? They're, they're partial socialism? Or we have, we have a capitalist economy with some elements? No, we don't. You know, we, have a, we have a corporatist economy, if, if you want to just try to describe it as a whole. But let, let me put it to you this way, conservative. If I took a hamburger, yeah, you, know, you got a big, juicy, delicious hamburger. You're about to eat this hamburger. It's, it's amazing. And I go, you know, hold on a second. That's a great hamburger. I'm going to improve it with a little bit of socialism, though. Let me just, I'm going to take that patty out. I'm going to take your meat patty out of your burger. I'm going to replace it with a turd. It's a turd. Now, but no, 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 it's it's not it's not a shit sandwich. It's 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 still a hamburger. It's just got some shitty elements in it. No, no. Would you call that a hamburger still? No, you call that a shit sandwich. Like let's let's be honest with how we're describing things today. Because look at national socialism. Just as as, as a political theory. The uh, the old parties who are in charge of the country today are Nazis by, by the actual definition of these words, right? They're nationalists and they're socialists. So you know what? I mean, I hesitate to use the term Nazi like, oh, you're a Nazi, you're because it's just one of these words that gets thrown around and it has become really meaningless without a proper intellectual examination of what it means. And when you do that and you go, okay, a Nazi is someone who's a nationalist and a socialist. Well, 
geez, that would be the Republican Party and the Democrat Party. They're both they're both nationalists and, and, and they're both socialists. So really, it's like, wow, we have we have one party in America. We know this, right, because it's funded by uh, the, the same corporate interests. You know, the Republicans and Democrats, you look at their overlapping sponsorships. You know, well, gee, the military industrial complex companies, they donate to Democrats and Republicans. Gee, the bankers, they donate to Democrats and Republicans. The police, the unions, they donate to Democrats and Republicans. All of the people behind the police state, the surveillance state, the military industrial complex, they love both parties. They donate and support both of them because they are both nationalists and they are both socialists. Nationalism gives them the ability to, to foster this strong sense of, of national pride and identity. You know, as, as Doug Stanhope said, patriotism, making you hate people you've never met and take pride in things that you've never done. And that creates this psychological grip on the country that makes it possible for them to enact socialist policies and not call it that. That was just national pride. Well, no, we we it's not it's not socialized security, even though the name's in the title. No, no, we're just we're just looking out for uh, older Americans. I mean, as Americans, don't you want to take care of the other Americans who can't take care of themselves? Don't you want grandma to not be forced to eat cat food? No, don't you want social security? I mean, you go, wow, okay. I see what's going on here. We have two wings of the American Nazi party, one pretending to be Democrats, one pretending to be Republican. So back to the story, they want you to think that these are right-wing extremists. That's Now they took it out of the title, just vehicle attacks rises extremists target protesters. The first words in the story are, Right-wing extremists are turning cars into weapons. Well, hold on a second. Right-wing? I mean, maybe they're on the right side of Nazism, but if they're nationalist socialists, that would make them extreme left-wing? Or maybe it doesn't matter. The thing is, the people who are doing this have something critically important in common with government. And government and the establishment media that serves it, like NPR here, they don't want you to see it this way. They don't want you to recognize it. And it's the same thing. You know, I, I debated uh, a communist recently on, uh, you know, on, on a debate show. And he's like, well, no, I share your goals of a peaceful, voluntary world, but we can't do it until we achieve a certain amount of uh, economic organization prosperity. We can take care of everybody. And I'm like, well, we're going to use, and you're like, wait, wait a sec. You mean the means justify the ends. You're going to use violence to achieve what you want. And you're, you're going to come up with another excuse for it and say that you're progressive, you're revolutionary. No, you're not. You're saying, I want more of the same. Violence is okay as long as we use it for the right reasons. And I, I'm just to be clear, I'm all for defensive force, but, when you say, I'm going to use the violence of the state, or I'm going to use violence to violate someone's individual right, I'm going to kill someone, or injure, or intimidate someone, or threaten them, as government does constantly with its consequences, or not going along with the herd, going along with the program and the programming. And the fact is that these people who are doing these vehicle attacks are not something different from the current paradigm. They are not woke revolutionary. Now that's almost giving them too much credit because I look at the story and I think, you know what, this is not a sustainable tactic. Like I was saying, I'm not worried about this becoming the dominant thing in American politics. You know, this is where I'm, I'm grateful for government doing something that the, the market would provide in its absence so that it, it and, and not preventing it from happening at least. And that's the kind of accountability that we have around automobiles. You kind of take it for granted. Everyone has a VIN, a vehicle identification number tagged on it. And there's a, the whole other license plate system. It's really difficult 
to get away with any kind of crime with a vehicle involved because of that tracking system. Now, I'm not for the government doing this. I'm not for the violations of privacy that are involved in this. I'm not for anybody forcing vehicle manufacturers to stamp VINs on their vehicle frames. No, you know, we, there, there are ways of achieving this peacefully. But in order to do that, we have to see the world through a clear lens. We have to describe it with accurate, honest language, not the language of the mainstream media or government or NPR with this story here. And we have to recognize that anybody using force and fraud or violence, coercion, any of these unethical things to try to control you, they're all crossing that same line that runs through every human heart between good and evil. And it doesn't matter if you want to label it left or right, if that's what you're doing, you're wrong. Thank <laughs> you.